Welcome to Knock Hill Racing Circuit. In this week's programme, we're concentrating on the super bikes, the fastest bikes that we have, and we also have the return of the sidecars. Weather conditions have been a bit dodgy all weekend. It's a two-day meeting. I'm going to hand it to Dennis and Duncan, and they're going to take you through the first day's action. Thank you very much, Joe Turner. And yes, once again, Duncan and Dennis up here in the commentary box, and it is green flags, and we're about to go racing for the sidecars. And this is the Saturday edition, and you can see track conditions, Dennis, they're just a little bit... Uh, a little bit wet and slippery as they have been, but a decent, a decent turnout of city cars. Yeah, we've got the quant uh, quality, yes. not the quantity as such, Duncan, but on pole position was Gordon Shand and uh, Belfry is his passenger there doing a fantastic job getting the pole position. Yeah, Gordon Shand and uh, Tony Belsey, Gordon Shand's been about for, for years and years. Uh, and uh, yeah, in the second place side cars, that's uh, one of our own, that's Ralph Pride on the back of that, the circuit mechanic. Uh, good to see Ralph uh, out there hanging over the back of Craig Nicholl. And a uh, uh, nice, quick, speedy double retiree. That looks like, uh, is that Kenny Andrews and possibly, possibly, I'm going to stick my neck up here, Walker. Ewan Walker and Pete Burgess, but I'll uh, come back to that one. Uh, but yeah, conditions were very tricky. We had Davey Rin as well was here. Scott Laurie was uh, was hanging about someplace, and no doubt we'll pick up with Scott Laurie fairly quickly. You can see that Gordon Shand is out there on his outfit that he has built himself. This is a Formula 2 style bike, the shorter bike. Not normally the type of bike that you see challenging the, the big Formula 1000cc bikes, but Gordon's actually got a 750 in that one for this weekend, and he is absolutely flying. He took a very dominant first win there. Yeah, it looks like a, an ideal combination. And there's some of the uh, riders and passengers coming up over the staff in time, but it was Shan from Rin from Nickel was the first three in the first sidecar race. Weather conditions were going to improve as he went along. Carl Pring there on the red outfit, very, very chuffed, and he'll be quite happy with that to get himself up there. And then we, we jump forward to the Superbikes. The Superbikes and Clubman guys were on track, basically effective immediately right at the back of the, the sidecar guys, and they had the same tricky weather conditions to deal with. Everybody on wet weather tyres, Dennis, it was a kind of a no-brainer for the tyre choice. Yeah, Donald McFadden hitting the, ho the hole shot there, so very good Donald McFadden, second quickest in qualifying, right behind Andrew Tasker was on pole position, as Andrew Tasker is having a look upside, he'll be in side of the hairpin. Yeah, Andrew Tasker has gelled with these big bikes very well. He did get past Donald McFadge in there and uh, he seems to have just come from the 600 and he really is getting on with that 1000cc Kawasaki. I know we've been all there watching Duncan. He's very, very confident in these wet conditions to get the bike on the side and, and just ratting that throttle open. Obviously the uh, Superstock bikes uh, equipped, equipped with uh, traction control systems and using it to full effect. Bruce Burney, a man riding injured at this meeting after a fairly large moment that he had at East Fortune a couple of weeks back. Uh, trouble with his neck and his back and, uh, and losing sensation in his arms so Bruce was kind of on the back foot from the word go but uh, he was still putting in some fantastic uh, performances through the meeting but in this race Andrew Tasker was, uh, was kind of gone at the front. Yeah, Andrew Tasker doing a, doing a good job at front. It was uh, Donald Fadgen trying to keep him as honest as he could, but obviously Donald then got overhauled by Bruce Burney, and uh, like I say, it was a, a, a race of tuition. Wet weather, obviously, very wet, but 54.9 seconds was the fastest lap in the race, and that was actually Bruce Burney that set it, but Andrew wasn't far behind that. He did a 55.2, which is uh, mightily quick. Some people would be high with that in the dry round here, but there was a checkered flag for Andrew Tasker, who took a very, very good first win. Bruce Burney, you can see him kind of moving about in the bike already, not looking terribly comfortable, but number 179, Andrew Tasker, was the man who took a, a well-deserved victory in that one. Yeah, there. and Callum Milne winning the, uh, the clubman category as well. Yeah, an upset there. Not Mr. Jim Lang, who has been uh, the man of the, the Clubman series, possibly the fastest rookie ever that we have seen. Uh, and then we come back onto the sidecars. Now keep an eye on the sidecar on the left hand side of the screen, just going past Davy Wren there. And uh, that's Scott Laurie. And Scott Laurie is his, uh, his original Mark One passenger on the back. Jimmy Connell passenger on this weekend. Two local guys from uh, just down the road, very close. And uh, Scott didn't uh, waste time at all. He put that bike right to the front, got ahead of Gordon Shand. And uh, speaking with Jimmy Connell, he said it was great. It was just like being, uh, being old times. And Scott said the exact same thing. You know, he barely know his area. Can't really feel him moving about. It was just happy. So uh, James Neve was staying, uh, was up with the team, and uh, obviously maybe thinks that his uh, his bride is a little bit under threat there. Well, that's it. And the sidecars obviously having to deal with the uh, the conditions as well as the solo bikes. We know these dry and fast conditions out there, and some of the guys even stand the races on slick tyres when it was pretty wet. Yeah, very wet conditions, but you can see that um, drying rapidly, as you say, Dan. But uh, Gordon Shand finished at an admirable second place here, and David Rin in the TWR Yamaha uh, he finished up third position. Craig Nickel and and uh, Ralph Braid retired with clutch issues. Uh, but we've got to say a, a mention to Stuart Taylor here who does build that bike with Davy Rin. So Stuart, we never mention you. Davy always takes the credit for that bike. I think we come on to the next super bike race, Dennis. And track conditions again. Well, you can see the clouds above. The kind of the, the sky tells its own story, really, doesn't it? Yeah, for sure. So you can see how uh, wet and tricky it is going to be out there. 
uh, through the first corner it was Bruce Burney who led the way and then there was a kind of smash behind there was uh, bikes going down the, the kind of new escape road there and that's what it's for the escape road was put in so people could uh, kind of duck down if they made a mistake there Derry Butcher was in the thick of the action and he was out there on his Ducati middle of the shot there on the red bike with the, the kind of wetsuit just disappearing through his corner named after himself and over the top of the John I wish you came yeah and spine uh, Graham Duncan who's uh, spent a bit of time up here recently in the background as well but back towards the sharp end it was Andrew Tasker overtaking Donald McFadden again down at the hairpin as they come on to the start finish straight and they're trying to chase down Bruce Burney who was pulling away at the sharp end yeah, uh, Graham Duncan has been spending an awful lot of time up here, isn't he? He's actually starting to freak us out a little bit with the time we see Big Dunkey up here. But Burnley back at the front there as he goes up the inside over that kind of wet patch and at the, into the back markers now. A back marker, Andy Belby. That's not something you normally see, you hear yourself saying. Andy Belby's a man who's normally at the front or mid pack of the super bikes here, but Andy's not having the best of weekends. He's about to go a lap down, and this one is George Spence retires. You can see Bruce Burnley diving up the inside of Andy Belby there and gets his nose cut off proper well. But is that Victor Corey there? Yeah. I think uh, obviously Bruce has been helped quite a bit but Andrew Tassel came right into the back wheel of Bruce Burnley's last lap and it's going to be a do or die move as it go down towards the hairpin into the open to come and it was Tasker who went on the outside Burnley went defensive you can see Tasker was lining a move up here and that big Kawasaki doesn't have to get out the corner Burnley had a bit of a wobble a bit of a moment but did he hold it to the flag yes is the answer there wasn't much in it I tell you that there was nothing in it when they went over the line there a couple of tenths a second uh, but Burnley was uh, quite happy to get back on the top step albeit he didn't look um, 100% right when he got off the bike Donna McFadden alongside him when he went to the hairpin also and that brings us to some dry racing now, some good racing, Sunday edition, and you can see the, the conditions are a lot better, still a bit cloudy above, uh, but here we go, we're going to have the sidecars now, and uh, they're going to make their way out on the grid, and as Dennis said, you know, we've not got the, the biggest quantity, but we've got the quality, Laurie and Connell, Shandon Belsey, Ren and Sandy, Pring and Bosnell, keep your eyes out for the, the nickel and pride combination as well, uh, these guys all very, very quick, and coming off a very successful Jock Taylor meeting, Scott Laurie won that East Fortune, won the Jock Taylor trophy, and that's something that every sidecar racer in the world really wants to win. Yeah, and it's good to see him here as also as his first race has been retaining that title. So now, yeah, just watch the little yellow twenty six bike. If we could see it off the line, the starts that little Formula Two bike gets the traction. It just absolutely leaps away, and uh, definitely not leaping away. It was Kenny Andrews here. Yeah, they're just on board the uh, the machine of David Rin there, heading down towards the top of Saint Kilda for the first time. But down at the sharp end, down at Scotsman corner, already up the inside was the machine of Scott Laurie on Gordon Shan. Gordon Shan quick off line, back up the inside in towards oh, yeah. Butchers, but has to back out of that in the last second, doesn't he? Good move there. So these these guys at the front there did look like Gordon Shan was going to have a wee shot popping up the inside of Scott Laurie, but as they get to Clark corner, you can see Tony Belzy right over the back end of that little F2 bike and get itself tucked back in. That's probably a perfect combination. The little the little 750 and the little short bike can break so late. We'll see. Gordon Gordon doing that as uh, as and when he feels like it, but leading at the front just now is Scott Laurie and Jimmy Connell. Yeah, I'll see you in an F2 chassis there, Duncan, as well, but the 750 more only loses out once it gets towards the top end of the rev range when the, the big 1000cc starts to pull away, like as it comes towards a little bit of the, the incline at the top of the hill there. <laughs> Kenny Andrews going round for a, a little bit of a spin there, Kenny Andrews and Adam Nix on the back of that bike, but here you can see Shad comes into that corner so quickly, and Gordon builds his own bike, you know, he puts that thing together himself, and uh, is he leading this now? Have we lost Scott Laurie? Big dark line. I think Scott Laurie is actually motored away at the front, but uh, Scott Laurie there, 53.9 second lap, and uh, I think it's uh, he's looking pretty dominant at the sharp end. If this is just trying to put some confidence back in Jimmy Connell, well, 53.9, that's one way to do it first thing in the morning. Right there you go, bang, you're able to do it, let's do it for the rest of the day. But coming around towards the apron, we look back at the, the Ewan Walker and Carl Pring coming into view. And another two F2s, that's another Gordon Shand bike there, the yellow bike, built again by Gordon Shand. And we like the, the antics of Carl Pring as well, don't we? Yeah. The, uh, yeah, after ceremonies we're big fans of Carl Pring but into the hairpin look at this look at Tony Belsey right over the back of Gordon Shand almost giving them a cuddle Gordon has a little look over the back of his shoulder up the go let's click off another lap and David Inn, another experienced man is on the move with Ricky Sandy and there is an onboard camel on that bike and they're giving us some fantastic footage looking back over the, the kind of legs of Ricky Sandy as it looks back out the, the back of the outfit Kenny Andrews decides to retire there Den he's had enough yeah, he's, he's, he's been fed up with, the, with over the course of the weekend, but I mean, so I'm impressed with the machine of David Rin, the 22 machine. He's doing a fantastic job there, trying to keep right in the wheel tracks of uh, Gordon Shand at the sharp end, but I think away of it at the moment, still at the front, is Scott Laurie. Yeah, he's having a bit of a mission. You look at that for a lunge by, by David Rin there, and Ricky Sandy gets past Carl Pring, and you can see Ricky Sandy holding on there, just crouches himself back, and as we go round towards this slope, big long left hand at the pass, it doesn't really need to do anything there apart from not let go. You've really got to hang on there and also get past other F2, but then the brakes, when you hit the brakes, 
breaks, tries to throw the pasture forward out the front, so you really haven't to hang on. And uh, Ricky Sandy, a novice pasture, did a cracking job there. You've done a bit of sidecar pasture in Duncan in, in the past. Yeah, I've done a bit of that. Certainly not at this speed. It was with Ralph Pride when Ralph was uh, racing. I helped him at East Fortune. But yeah, it's uh, the forces that go through your body is, is, is phenomenal. Dan, we'll get you out there. Don't worry, we'll get you out there. Hi, it's, it's something I'd look forward to. I'm not sure about throwing myself as a passenger, to be fair, but then even the controls of a sidecar are completely different to a solo machine. You wouldn't expect everything to be on, on the hands, you know. What's happened here, then? What's happened here? Scott Laurie, has Scott Laurie got a problem because he's been wound in by Gordon Shand, and Gordon Shand and now Davy Wren passing Scott Laurie and Jimmy Connell. Now, has there been some sort of issue that we haven't seen? I, I've got a feeling that, uh, that Scott Shand's trying to make this one pretty interesting. He's letting these guys catch back up and he's going to try and show them how it's done on the last lap. Big, big bit of slip through there. Ricky Sandy just looks over and say, uh, Laurie and Connell will go absolutely flying past to take second place again and is that, is that a flag out yes it is the last lap flag so here we go Scott Laurie's got this all to do if he's, if he's played played a pretty smart game he's got Gordon Shand in front of him he's going to have to get past back past Shandy and where can he do it can he wind that big F1 up on this last lap show of Shand and Bells oh, oh, absolutely on it oh no you have mentioned it Gordon Shand extremely extremely good on the brakes in the hairpin Duncan so uh, we're, we're Scott gonna, Laurie's going to have to try his heart out here we're going to see something pretty special the little left two bite goes through Clark Corner there goes uh, Laurie and Connell he gets tucked in now who is going to have it Laurie's building 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 all the way around he's going to have to go long way around Shan he's not going to make it easy for him and there he goes Scott Laurie takes the lead and he takes the lead in the last corner and Shan's going to be late on the brakes he's up the inside and a good manoeuvre by Gordon Shan there good classy manoeuvre and just puts the outfit right in the middle of Scott Laurie so Scott Laurie with a huge dark line at the hairpin but Shan's going to take the win from Scott Laurie and Damien Rinn in third position well we didn't see that one coming I'm pretty we? sure that's not what Scott Laurie was thinking about there <laughs> so Gordon Shan you can see the old fox just positioned that little outfit right in the middle where Scott Laurie wanted to open the gas hard and Scott had to almost think twice about that one but there you go cracking sidecar antics cracking sidecar racing Gordon Shand and Tony Belsey win from Scott Laurie and Jimmy Connor with David in and Ricky Sandy in third place and Gordon Shand you'll be feeling uh, particularly smug one would imagine about that Dennis I have for sure and like you say they left the door wide open for him and uh, he, he took it with great uh, confidence ah, the Kirkcaldy Kawasaki van uh, pushes uh, the, the nickel and pride combination back in Ralph's used to sitting down at his work so I must say that so uh, let's move on there's your, <laughs> your results after it Shandon Belsey Laurie O'Connell Con Rin Sandy Walker Burgess and Carl Pring the legend that is Carl Pring and Chris Bosnell off the back or join us after the break Welcome to another episode of Racing No Filter. Joining me in sunny California, Bill Wood, and down in sunny Florida, Peter Keen. We're going to take a look at some of the products HPD has created for the 2012 Honda Civic. And specifically, we're going to show you an install and adjustable sway bar. Until then, folks out there, you take care. Want to keep up with all the racing action at the track? Well, download the new Go Racing TV iPhone and Android app. And remember to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Scott Laurie, great to see you back at Knock Hill. You're flying high in the British Championship. And were you playing with them a little bit at the end there? Yes, we were. Um, I thought we just... It, it's no good racing, clearing off. It's no good for me, it's no good for my, my home country, and just thought I'd slow down a bit and get a little bit of race towards the end. So did we actually win that, or did Gordon win it? That was uh, The plan didn't work, did it? You left it too late to go, I think, at the end, and, uh, and he got it right on the line there. Good boy, imagine a big boy getting beat by an F2. On. <laughs> and the winner of the sidecars, congratulations. Um, did you think he was toying with you? Yeah, he relaxed too much at the end. Up, he, he must have thought we were miles away and didn't realise it. It was a great lunge at the hairpin. Well, if you want to call it a lunge, I called that manoeuvre. So it was under control, so that's the main thing. And when you came out of the hairpin, you stuck it to the middle of the road. Did you expect him to drive back past you as you got to the line? I try to confuse him a bit, but uh, if you just stay your own line, it's safer that way. I'm here with Davey Rin and Ricky Sandy, the new passenger. Davey, congratulations on the third place, but we'll start with the passenger. Uh, how did you enjoy that? Oh, yeah, it was good fun. Um, first weekend at Knock Hill, so just getting used to the track and having fun. And how did you find hanging on to the back of Davey? Because I know he's not, uh, not the gentlest with his passengers at times. That's all right. We've, I've known, Dave, known Davey for a while, so 
it's just trust, trusting each other and I think we're, we're getting there now, so it's good fun. Good stuff. I'll move across. Davy, step this way if I can shimmy you around, guys. Davy, last time we saw you out was the British Championship meeting. A little bit happier to be on the podium now. Uh, we were better. That was a better disaster that weekend. So. But that's racing. It's good to see the sidecars back in Scotland. Def, definitely, definitely, definitely. We're trying to get more numbers. We're doing cheaper entries for them, so the more sidecars we can get, the better, basically. Makes it cheaper. Good stuff. Well done on the podium. Thank you very much. Uh, we only run three on the front row now, which puts Roy Houston, and Roy's uh, stepped up to the big bike. Roy, we'll have a quick chat. Um, front row, we only run three on the front row, I was just saying, so you're lucky you've not missed the cut-off like uh, Donald behind you there and slipped to the second row. Great starting position. I know, uh, just for that race yesterday, I was right lucky to... It was with the back markers, pulled right into Donald and on the second last lap I got past him. Tried to come past him in the last lap with the hairpin but overshot it. Uh, so I just nipped underneath him and managed to get third place. So I'm, I'm mega happy with that and hopefully get the whole shot in the first corner. That's the plan. Um, it's starting to get there now with the big bike. Uh, last year you almost won the 600 Superstock. You came really, really close at the very end of the year. Then you stepped up onto the big bike and you were kind of missing the first half of the year. I well, it was all about setup uh, and obviously getting used to the more power with the bike. And now we're getting there, we've got a setup that we that we can work with and I can work with. Um, so we're just gradually getting quicker and quicker, which is, was the main aim for this year anyway. So happy, happy with our progress. Can you take a win today? Uh, hopefully. I, I don't know. I'll try my best, you know. Uh, we'll see. Good stuff. Good luck. I still know Bruce Burney on pole position, but I'm sure he's on his way down. I'll hand it back to Dennis and Dunk and they'll run you through the grid. Thank you very much, Joe Tanner. And yes, we will run you through the grid as the superbikes baked in sunshine leave the holding area. Andrew Tasker is on pole position from Dora McFadgen and Brian Campbell. Second row is Torco Patterson, Roy Houston and Bruce Burney. Keep your eyes on Torco Patterson. That is, uh, that's a man on a mission this year. Then we've got Keith Milne and Lang. Uh, Jim Lang as well. He's been beat by Callum Milne and the clubman now, Dan. This is going to be war out there, isn't it? It's good to see a clubman battle right the way through. You know, you've also got likes of Alan Bryce, Derek Butcher, a whole host of the, uh, the clubman guys doing a fantastic job big grid of bikes as well right at the very back 23rd position Derek Butcher who missed qualifying because he was away and uh, there he slots on alongside Bobby Campbell there so keep your eyes on Bobby Campbell as well another man who is uh, quite quick and come from track days so green flags waved at the back and we're about to go racing here and not kill we wait for the lights coming on the Beatsons Bridge and then we will be down towards the first corner who's going to get the whole shot away the goal can Roy do it Roy was threatening a good whole shot but down towards it comes we're on board with Andrew Tasker and he He's definitely not going to lead. Look at Torgo Patterson. Comes from the second row, but it's Burnley who leads from what looks like Patterson and then Roy Houston and in third place. But Andrew Tasker just slides past him going through Leslie's and it's on board camera billiards about the table there. Dennis, it's going too much for me. But we're back on the outside shot and it's Burnley from Patterson and Tasker. Yeah, well, that's a sight you used to see quite a lot here at Inoculus so as Bruce Burnley and Torgo Patterson fight out right the way through. And obviously, you've got likes of Andrew Tasker. And as Torgo goes up the inside at class early on, very yeah. impressive dive. Ma makes a very good dive there and he's got a good exit speed from it as well as Tasker winds up the big Kawasaki and comes round the outside of a bucking and weaving Bruce Burnley on that BMW the Carnegie Fuels bike and look at Donald McFadgen what an outbreaking manoeuvre by Donald McFadgen to get himself into fourth position yeah we, we'll give a bit uh, of, of, of abuse to Donald McFadgen as well but the Wiley Old Fox fantastic on the brakes and Roy Houston having a little bucket and a little start finish line well, you called him old I didn't call him old that's for sure as Donald McFadgen is in fourth position right now but Torco Patterson on the Sol tyre Suzuki prepared by YPE Stuart Young is at the front ahead of another YPE, YPE prepared, prepared bike that's not easy to say then that's Andrew Tasker's Kirkcaldy Kawasaki as they go through the John R. Weir chicane just now and make their way up the back straight and Tasker's right on the back of Torco Patterson now as they come in towards Clark Corner but Torco's always been good there he goes in pretty quick and Torco running on the trade of Dunlops as well this weekend he's not on the slick tyres he's decided to go back to the Dunlops which he has been so successful on round here yeah obviously in the past he's been going on here in low 50s with the Dunlops yeah. you know, that's going back quite a few years ago Duncan and uh, nothing's changed with the circuit the bikes have improved and uh, they said the only thing that you can think of is, is changing back to the Dunlops and uh, it's proven him well so far at the moment he's, he's out there at the sharp end but watching how much curb they use on the exit of class well not the ideal kind of line we're just looking back at a start there from Brian Campbell further down the field he's a mega start look at that 
Yeah. Getting through the pack nice and easy. Yeah, the rear end shot of Brian Campbell, a rear view uh, replay start. There's Brian didn't uh, he had to start quite deep in the pack after after not the best uh, last race. So you can see him making a position hand over fist as he goes through. And there's Andy Belby already in front of him and uh, Adekai as well. So Brian Campbell should be a man that should be at the front, and you can see him just absolutely tearing it through on this replay here. So good to see replays. We like replays. We do Dennis keeps us uh, keeps us awake. But at the front you got to you got to take a half, half to Patterson as well. Torco he's out there on a Suzuki. He's got no trash control. He's got no anti wheelie. It's all on the wrist then. Yeah, that's right. I mean, and to be fair, obviously a lot of the bikes, like say the BMW and the Kawasaki, do have the traction control systems. Anti wheelie. You know they do have a whole host of aids, even the ABS and stuff like that, Duncan. But the you know the non traction bikes seem to be the ones that have the most power as well. They manage to pull through the corner a lot cleanly. Whereas if you're on the BMW, it just holds you back very slightly. It keeps you nice and safe. But I think the likes of Bruce Burney and people that turn the traction completely off when they're racing now. I think the only one we can hear with the traction is Andrew Tasker's Kawasaki. Yeah, the anti wheelie kicks in quite a lot in that Kawasaki. But this is war at the front now. And can Burney get involved in this? We'll soon find out as they come out of the hairpin. Patterson has a little look over his shoulder. Tasker goes back towards the, the other side. Oh, there's a little look. They're never the best thing to look. One way he passes you another. But they're over the, the top of the hill. They're pulling big wheelies. And let's go back. Here's Bobby Campbell on a very, very old R1. Possibly even older than Donald McFadge in that R1 that he's on there. The old 99 spec R1. And he's in there with BMWs. Works for the RAF down in Norwich and comes up for the meeting here. So Bobby Campbell, number 172, there with the orange belly pan on the blue R1. Great to see him here. Yeah, definitely doing a good ride as well. And I thought it was Andy Belby initially there, but is that Victor Corrieri's on the far with? I think that's I. It's maybe Alan Howitson actually. We'll, we'll come back on that one, Alan Howitson out there. But uh, there's quite a few of the guys that all look very, very similar, Dennis. It's easy to drop a clang, and we know all about it. But back at the front end, yeah, Bernie's caught up with Tasker. And Torx looks like he's just maybe starting to eke out a gap here. They've got a back marker. Torx will get past him before Butchers. Well, Tasker. No, oh, Tasker goes round the outside of Butchers. That's a brave, brave move. Did Burnley get past? No, I think that's one that got held up there was Bruce Burnley. He did get through, but he just definitely lost that little bit of a tour. Wow, that was mega there, Dan. That's a brave place to be making a, a making a move as we come up over Clarks for another lap, taking him off heading right towards the open. This is where the Suzuki looks pretty good. Although Tasker seems to gather a lot of ground back up on the brakes, quite hot into the corner, but then it's all about getting a good drive through and out of the hairpin, isn't it? Yeah, you've got to carry the exit speed, and no, there's no point being fast into a corner and losing your speed, especially onto a long straight because you're, you're losing it all the way up over the top as they're coming on towards the uh, last lap, I think, Duncan. Yeah, Dorothy Fadgen hanging in well there, and also Mike Keith as well. We seem to have lost Troy Houston after the, the, the pre race promise that he did give Joe Tanner he's just uh, just off the back we've seen Mike Keith coming into view there and Bruce Burney looks quite racy here doesn't he yeah Bruce is looking racy like you say he's not 100% with himself at the moment but he's still trying his hardest out there and obviously he got the whole shot he got away let Torco through on the opening lap and then Andrew Tasker managed to pass him down towards a hairpin uh, but Bruce is definitely in the mix for this still another back marker is that Michael Robertson that's going to come into view on the, the 600 Honda who's out there in the clubman class I believe it will be as they come through Clark Connie can see Parson just pouring a little bit of air under that front wheel as he gasses it hard through Clark Connor round towards the hairpin and he's always been good in the brakes there he takes his racing line back up Tasker gets past him as well and Bunny sticks it up the inside shows the back marker no respect whatsoever and here we go out the hairpin up the main street you can see the bikes want to pull you back to the inside there then then they want to wheelie and then they want to wheelie again and it's not an easy thing coming up the straight when these big bikes flat out no but obviously you know that, that's the technique that's where the guys do it nice and smooth but we are until the last lap Duncan and Torco looking pretty smooth at the sharp end there I think the battle is going to be on between Andrew Tasker and Bruce Burney for second place because Torco looking so strong and smooth yeah he's, he's, he's kind of got, looks quite dominant in now as we go back into the pack who have we got here Callum Milne Callum Milne is that Richard Hughes as well as that Andy Hunter I think it's Richard Hughes and yeah Richard Andy Hughes Belby. and Andy Belby yeah yeah good to see those guys all getting a good battle there we would expect Belby to be in front of them so Andy's not having the best off weekends as round towards the hairpin comes Torx and he's chased hard by one 179 Andrew Tasker who's getting gets that thing in all sorts of funny shapes there as they come in towards the hairpin and we go back to the Belby battle now yeah, Richard Hughes there, uh, right, uh, right behind him, doing a fantastic job on the uh, G6R 1000. Uh, old relentless bike, uh, Duncan. Ex Dennis Hobbs bike, is it? Yeah, is it? Oh. So here we go. Let's go for another lap as we go into Watch first corner. See it comes this time. It's the last lap, Dennis. The last lap flag. It does fool me, and Dennis, quite a lot there. And Torx looks like he's got this one in the bag. He's just got to do a, a good last lap. He's got to be quick because these guys are circulating very fast behind him. If you start to throttle off, this is where the nerves could start kicking in. And before you know it, Tasker's all over the back here and past you. But it looks like Parson has got it pretty much in tow as we see Alan Bailey going in the outside of Jim Kerr. Yeah, Jim Kerr out there. He's obviously just started racing this year and doing a, doing a good job as Derek Butcher. There, 
uh, just going to snip past him, but leader in the uh, Clubman class at the moment is Jim Lang. So Jim Lang leading the Clubman, and in second place is Alan Bryce at the moment. Here comes Torquil at the hairpin. Can he hold this one through the hairpin? Yes, he can. He's through. He's quite steady. He's quite easy. He comes out of the corner. Oh, that's it. We look back behind them, rubs it in. Torquil Patterson takes a checker flag and a fantastic victory. Well deserved. Second place for Andrew Tasker, and Bruce Burney comes home in a in a fairly modest third place. I'm sure I gave him three last laps there as well. <laughs> Go for that one. It's not a problem. And Donald McFadden gets home in fourth. So Torco Patterson, he'll be happy with that one, as will Salter Suzuki and YPE. He wins the race. Andrew Tasker is second place. Carnegie Fuels Mounted Bruce Burney is third place. Donna McFadden is in fourth place. Yeah, followed home by Mike Keefe, Roy Houston, Jim Langley later in the Clubman Championship and Brian Campbell. And the Superbike winner, Torco Patterson, that's more like it. Uh, yeah, yeah, glad to be back in the top step at Knock Hill. Uh, it's been a while, a couple of years of not racing here properly and then uh, issues at the beginning of the season and just not really gelling. But this morning, yesterday was a disaster for me as well, but this morning just dry tyres, my head was in the right place. I got a good night's sleep last night. Uh, and it just all came together for this race this morning, so hopefully more of the same after lunch. Second place, Andrew Tasker. Now, I like what I see here because I can see quite a stroppy, grumpy face almost and because you won that win again. Now, you've had a taste of it yesterday and now you're a little bit annoyed. Yeah. Would I be right in saying that? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, I want to win the Scottish race, that's the main one, but... Um I just couldn't get past Torco. I mean, there was bits that he was fast, like coming out here, and he could get such good drive. But then the rest of it, I was catching him through the chicane and stuff. But um, it was a good race. I enjoyed it. I could see Bruce was coming in on the board, and I was like, ah, oh, just it's bad enough having to race Torco. Never mind Bruce and Torco at the same time. But um, you're playing with the big boys now. Yeah, playing with the big boys. But um, I mean, without our sponsors and that, we couldn't do it without them. I mean, Morton Stickle, Lost Scotland, um, I meant to go property maintenance, uh, Knock Hill as well, um, for all the testing stuff, and uh, Stuart YP as well, he does all the, he does mine and Torkel's bikes, so I don't know if he's getting an unfair advantage or something, but um, nah, without all the guys it wouldn't be possible, so thanks very much. Well done, let's see a win later on. I'll try. With so much racing going on in the world, you'd have to be a four-headed monster to keep up with it all. Luckily, we have that. Join Peter Keane, Bill Wood, Errol Tucker, and their guest driver analyst each week for an opinionated look at the news coming out of the racing world. Remember, it's GoRacingTV.com for all your racing and video needs. Welcome back. So here we go, we're back on track with the sidecars and it's Gordon Shand and Scott Laurie at the front row of the grid with Davey Wren and Hugh Walker second row on the grid. Dennis Hobbs looking forward to the sidecar race as ever, doing a little dance in the commentary box today, do you want to enlighten me on that? No, no, I'm just thinking uh, Scott Laurie's not going to be uh, caught with his pants on this time. I would hate to see Scott Laurie caught with his pants and I tell you that, so there's a green flag at the back of the grid and the Beatsons bridge will light up in a couple of seconds with five big red lights, there we go and who's going to get the whole shot down towards first corner, away we go bit of a delayed reaction there but Gordon Shand again with an absolute ripper of a start as they'll get very close with Kenny Andrews and Walker mid-pack there round the outside of Craig Nicol goes Davey Rinn and that's a brave, brave manoeuvre Yeah, just chops his nose off there, I think uh, Ralph Brown would have been expecting that one as well no, Ralph wants to win very much so wants to win and these guys are, let's see if they can all hang in there let's hope that Craig and Ralph have uh, fixed their clutch issues which they had in the first one which really did, uh, did hamper them but look at the fantastic camera view there we can see from Ricky Sandy just over his boots there as we see Nickel and Pride in the back and look at that let's go with his left hand let's go with his left hand just hangs it over the side that's quite brave that actually yeah but leading the way is the F2 off at the moment they have uh, David Rin so doing a, a fantastic job into Gordon the, Shand <laughs> like Gordon Shand into the hairpin from Scott Laurie David in in third place on the Stuart Taylor built bike we'll get that in for you Stuart you'll be happy with that and then it's the Nickel and Pride outfit in fourth position so these guys away at the front the four fastest outfits in Scotland here today at Knock Hill making their way in towards St Curves as Dennis Hobbs still shaking his head can't believe he got that one wrong I don't know what's happening 
<laughs> in towards Scotsman corner, Gordon Shand leads away. And does he run a bit wider? Or yeah, I've been looking at this now. I've, I've recollected myself, Duncan. Gordon Shand doing a good job hanging off uh, the, the outfit of Scott Laurie. But Scott Laurie, it's only a matter of time. 53 seconds he was going around in early run in the first race. And this one, I'm sure, once he gets past, he's just going to absolutely pull away. He's going to be slowing down again and make a, a race of it over the last few laps. He just wanted to clear off and get a good victory. Yeah, good point there, Dan. I've never known many pastures to let go with their arm or their hand as they're leaning over the back there. Brave move, Ricky Sandy and Laurie hits the front and Shand counteracts straight back up the inside with not a lunge, Joe Tanner. That's called a manoeuvre. He'll be happy with that one now. Has Laurie got the power? Look at Tony Belsey, look at him and Jimmy Connor waving at each other. Absolutely first class. The pastures having a little giggle and a nod at each other as they got the main straight there. Whereas the drivers have got the race face on and they're just stealing into the distance. Yeah, and you've got to remember that, that to get the sidecars on the track, it is mainly the passenger that's making the outfit turn the corners, isn't it, and get, and get through all the twisty stuff. If you didn't have a passenger, you wouldn't go around at half the speed. Put it that way, these guys, uh, they earn their money, and some of them, I mean, there's absolutely nothing on them. They're, they're skin and bones, but they're, they're very, very fit. And like James Knee, for instance, six foot two, but he can fold himself up like a flat pack chair, so in towards Clark Corners comes Scott Laurie and Jimmy Connell, and Gordon Shan there, a bit more ballast. Is that what you're trying to see on Gordon Shan, Dennis? More suited to the wet weather conditions, don't Yeah, heading towards the airport, he comes Shandy just clipping the white line with that chair wheel. And the good thing about these drivers, they know exactly how wide their outfit is. They can put these things through tiny, tiny little gaps and, uh, and not forget the pastures here. They know how wide it is on their side anyway. <laughs> Absolutely. So here we have Kenny Andrews and Adam next coming in towards Clarks. And they're just holding up the number 13 outfit of Hugh Walker uh, with Pete Burgess in the back of that. Pete Burgess, a big fan of the Scottish Sidecar Racing Club, and they've just made their way around the outside, and now they're still stuck behind Kenny Andrews. So Kenny Andrews being a, a bit of a roadblock, not something we're used to seeing Kenny being. Is that the F1 against two F2s as well, Duncan? It certainly is. I think that F1 doesn't seem to be running 100%, does it? Well, we'll, we'll hold judgment on that. We'll see how Kenny gets up the straight. He's absolutely on it now as he goes over the crest hill. Wonder if he's just playing with these two, just toying with them. Catch me if you can, boys. But we really want to get back to the front because that is where the action is with the Laurie, Rin, Shand and Nickel battle. If they're in that kind of order, but can Walker get round the outside as they go through the left-hander in towards Scotsman? No, it's still Kenny Andrews and Adam Nix who hold that one and keep it quite safe there. And up the inside before Butchers, brave move, brave move, Kenny will just cut your nose off. That's for sure, you could be the race leader and he'd still do that to you. We saw Shandy trying that one earlier on Scott Laurie and had to bail out of it. But look at that, let's give the advantage to the ones behind now. <laughs> oh no, here comes Carl Pring, everybody run as he makes his way just into the back. But this time Walker is passed and Pring's going to go around the outside. Look at that, what a move of Carl Pring goes around the outside of everybody. And he'll be loving that one as it heads towards the hairpin. Is that what you call a two for one? <laughs> yeah, something like that. I wonder if he'll bring his special little victory cap back out for the prize given tonight. Carl Pring, is he going to have a look on the brakes here as he goes up the inside of Walker? Yes, he is, and here comes Kenny Andrews, incoming like a missile. Thankfully, everybody gets it through, and there's a, there's minimum um, no contact. Oh well. It's up the main street. Is that Scott Laurie catching up? Yeah, Scott Laurie. It's not the type of thing you want to see in front of you. He's catching these guys as the three abreast. Where is Scott Laurie going to go? Where's he going to put that LCR? He goes to the inside and he passes everybody in one fell swoop. At least you know you can get four, car, four side car wides over the start finish line now. <laughs> yeah, and you wouldn't want to do it though, would you? With Carol Pring and Kenny Andrews, four wide. A braver man than me. I believe Scott Laurie had the speed there, the momentum to get through. And Scott Laurie's done exactly what we, we were expecting, Duncan. He's got to the front, he's absolutely got the hammer down. And he's now pull, pulling away. And obviously the, the superior speed of him around this circuit, he's managed to lap three of the outfits so far. And I don't think he's going to catch up to, to many more, to be fair, because obviously we've got Hamish Mackay there, who's the next man up. And uh, he's a fair way up uh, the field and doing a fantastic job. Bit of smoke coming at the back of uh, David Inn as he comes through the chicane there, Den. But yeah, was, you mentioned it earlier on, Scott Laurie, or Joe did. Scott Laurie racing the British Championship. He's just... He's just raised up that level, isn't he? Winning the Jock Taylor, be beating Tim Rees fair and square. He is a, he's a bit of a man. He's riding a, a crest of a wave, as I said, about somebody else earlier on. Yeah, it's taken him a few years to, to get to grips with the, with the side can, how to master it properly and getting the feeling for the thing. But now he's, uh, he's definitely a class act in the job. So up over the crest hill, Scott Laurie's already gone. He's checked out in second place. We've got Gordon Shand. Then we've got Davey Rin and Ricky Sandy just going past on cue Ricky Sandy's bum. As we go underneath the Beatsons Bound Supply Bridge, he hangs over the, the side of the outfit and helps Davey get that one through the corner as they get to see it curves. You can see Tony Belsey right over the back of, uh, of Gordon Shand there, trying to put a little bit more weight forward, just so they can help with the bike turning in at Scotsman. Yeah, Holland and pull through. Over the top of the Johnny Wish again. You've got to watch for those sausage curves as you go through. You don't want to be touching them as you go over the top of the, the Johnny Wish again. Carl Pring, does he know that David Inn's there? Or does David Inn just sneakily cheek his way past? Yeah, I, th I think that was just a nice move by Carl Pring moving, moving across and letting them through without holding them up. And uh, David Inn, I think he's got the, the hammer down at the moment, David Inn. He's lapped in a little bit quicker than Gordon Shand ahead of him. Ah, can he catch Shandy? These are two guys that have been around for a long time. You can see how much the pasture gets 
beating about almost as the Kermandera is uh, now in towards the hairpin we've got Ralph Pride on the back of Craig Nickel. they get past the Kenny Andrews and New Walker battle as well Ralph hanging right over the side of that and it'd be good to see Craig Nichols bike just going that little bit quicker it's just a shame that a clutch problem I think I had some sort of fuel issue yesterday so when that thing goes they can really motor on that bike so uh, let's hope that they get going yeah, hopefully so. And like you say, Ralph Pride obviously is keen to be out there. He wants to be on the podium at the sharp end. As we look back at the uh, the outfit, the 72 machine of Scott Laurie. And uh, like I say, impressive style. There's nobody even in the same kind of shot or kind of person. Obviously, we do see uh, Gordon Chan in the background there. But Scott Laurie, absolutely uh, in dominant foul. He's already put a, a lap in two and a half seconds faster than anybody else. And he's just cruising around. Yeah, and Jimmy Connell makes it look very easy in the back as well, doesn't he? He's not, he's not working too hard. He's making it look quite easy. And, and that's what Scott Laurie was saying. You can't feel he's there as he, Jimmy Connell gives a little wave as he comes through the airpin there little thumbs up here comes a checker flag it's going to be a win for Scott Laurie and Jimmy Connor good wave for the checker flag there Gordon Shan's going to come through in second place here Tony Bell's in Gordon Shan's going to retire here isn't he Gordon Shan's not going to finish this one or is he no he is if there's a hand in there there's definitely an issue in that little left too as Gordon Shan takes second position and in third position in fact cancel that Gordon Shan finishes third and fourth was Craig Nicol because who finished second Dennis that'll be David Rin thank you pal clanger there so there's your winner, Scott Laurie and Jimmy Connell in the back of that outfit, making their way back up into the post-race ceremony. Laurie and Connell from Ren and Sandy and Shand and Belsey. Thank you very much. Nickel and Pride, Mackay and Naylor, with Ping and Bosnell, Walker and Burgess and Andrews and Nicks in eighth position. Let's hand down to Joe Tanner for the post-race interview. Scott, another win. Obviously, we could have predicted that before you went out there. Um, obviously, the race, fairly straightforward. Let's talk about sidecars in Scotland. Are you here for mileage? Are you here to support, uh, support the grid? No. Well, to be fair, um, I'm here this weekend just for a fun weekend. My old passenger who hurt his arm three years ago, um, he's back to uh, f being fully fit. And he, he was out in Jock Taylor races at his fortune a couple of weeks ago um, with someone else. He had a wee knock on his confidence, he didn't enjoy it. So this weekend is just about him getting back and just boosting him to make, so that he feels good about getting back in a sidecar. And this weekend he seems to be doing that, so I... So for the last sidecar race today, Scott Laurie started on the back of the grid. You can see Hamish Mackay was in all sorts of problems there, and it was Gordon Shand and at the front, Davy Lorin away. Scott Laurie did change passengers for this one. He brought James Neve back. Jimmy Connell was happy with what he'd done, so James Neve came back out for an outing. And as we see the guys just about making their way up the main street, here comes Laurie and Neve, and James Neve showing off just a little bit through the hairpin known to his friends as Juggy, makes his way up the main street there in James Neve and Scott Laurie taking a fantastic win in the next last sidecar race. The championships is Davy Rin leading from Stevie Kershaw, Scott Laurie and Gordon Shand are third and fourth with Bill Davy in fifth place, not here this weekend, Carl Pring, Arthur Fulton and Kenny Andrews running in eighth position in the championship. Want to keep up with all the racing action at the track? Well, download the new Go Racing TV iPhone and Android app. And remember to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Welcome to another episode of Racing No Filter. Joining me in sunny California, Bill Wood and down in sunny Florida, Peter Keith. We're going to take a look at some of the products HPD has created for the 2012 Honda Civic. And specifically, we're going to show you an install and adjustable sway bar. Until then, folks out there, you take care. I'm here with the Scottish Superbike champion from last year, Bruce Burney. Bruce, uh, um, leading the championship by my rough calculations at the moment. Uh, I think it's quite tight, but you're still leading the championship. But not an easy weekend so far for you. No, not at all. I was uh, racing East Fortune a couple of weeks ago, and I was leading the race by a couple of seconds. And I took a really bad uh, tank slap, or I suppose you could call it, and I affected my, my neck, etc. And uh, I thought I'd got over it the last, last two weeks leading to here. And yesterday in the wet and I was fine, but that last race in particular, I don't know what happened but um, something's happened to my back and my neck and my arms and I can't feel the ends of my fingers and that so uh, it's not a good place to be now but uh, I, I hopefully it rains for this next race as a Scottish seems to take everything down a little bit you know there's not so much forces going through you but uh, we'll just have to get on with it and uh, I'm gutted to be fair. 
Final race of the day, the Superbikes are heading out on track and unfortunately Bruce Burney will not be joining them. Injuries just a little bit too bad. Medics have advised him not to race, so unfortunately our championship leader is not on the grid. Thank you very much, Joe Tanner. Some very interesting information there for us. Dennis Hobbs, Bruce Burney will not be back out on the grid because he is a hurt bunny, but the red lights are on the bridge. So here we go, we're super big racing again and not kill. They've got wet track, but we have got kind of clearing skies, Dennis. So it's a tire choice, it's a nightmare. As Patterson leads them through St. Curves and Leslie's, as everybody arrives at Scotsman Corner, Torco Patterson again has got the whole shot on the salt tire Suzuki. Yeah, we can see Jim Langley, the, uh, the Clement guy with his bib on He's had a hard task today, hasn't he? Is Jim now he's got all kinds of pressure from a few of the guys around him. Alan Bryce, Callum Milne, he's pulling him increasing pressure. He's not having it his own way. He's not Jim Lang's uh, been, been kind of, he's been upset. He's been the fastest rookie ever, but oh, what's happening there? Who's that? That looks like, oh, Andy Belby's gone into Bobby Campbell. Bobby Campbell's fallen off. They've been run over by Andy Belby. <laughs> and Richard Hughes, very good to stop there and not actually hit anybody. Yeah. Oh, so unlucky Bobby Campbell. A bit of an offering collected by, uh, yes, Roy Weese, uh, collected by Andy Belby. So poor Andy won't get to start that because he was part of that accident. So here we go. The lights about to come back on for the restart of the Superbike race and who's going to get the whole shot this time then? Yeah I think Roy Houston's been pretty good off line but also Donovan Fadgen So uh, as we go towards the bridge just now it's Torkoll's gone Torko has got the absolute hammer down on that Suzuki and Roy Houston does try to come into St Andrew Tasker and Tasker lets him oh didn't expect that to happen well Tasker will go back through in the left hander yes through Leslie's and he takes that position back as we see Mike Keith and Donna McFadgen combined age off that's right, well, I, I did say Tocco was going to get the whole shot dunk. You did, I remember you saying that somewhere along the line. Jim Lang just off the back of Brian Campbell as well, as through the John Arweer chicane they come. Torco looks a little bit nervous on that thing, doesn't he? Doesn't look 100% confident. Yeah, but it's tricky conditions, Duncan. We've got drying lines in places and also wet bits of the track as well, so it's not easy for these guys out there. Yeah. Uh, but look at this, Andrew Tasker got that thing wide open, hasn't he? That's relying on the traction control and full throttle as opposed to a bike with no traction control and just feathering it through short shifting. Yeah, Torco didn't have an answer for the, the two ZX10s that have now gone past him there as he comes out the hairpin Torco Parson does seem to be struggling in these conditions as he makes his way up the main street it is now Tasker from Houston and Patterson with Dormick Fadgen in third place Mikey Brian Campbell and the rest all motor through Torco just doesn't look right there does he? He missed his apex yeah. by a little bit ran wide and uh, pushed himself offline and uh, Roy Houston though obviously we've seen Roy get good stats before but on the second lap making progress has pushed his way up into second place rather than being further up and going backwards Okay, okay. so you're saying that Roy's actually holding his own here for once rather than fading away through yeah, the race. I'm saying he's making progress forward as uh, we see Don McFadden in the background there going up the inside of Torco Patterson So Torco's having a nightmare and Roy's having a belter in this one as they make their way towards the hairpin Roy Houston definitely making hay while the sun shines on a wet knock hill here at knock hill you can see it wriggling about towards the hairpin Yeah, the man looking comfortable in the background there looks like it's uh, Brian Campbell's looking pretty good he's pulled his way through the field obviously happy in these conditions at the moment it looks like he's, uh, he's definitely making progress. He's trying to chase down Torco Patterson behind as well. Have we got a camera on the back of Roy Houston's bike? I think I spotted one there as uh, Andy Hunter and Michael Robertson make their way through the hairpin and up the, up the start finish. There's Jim Lang. There's our fastest rookie ever in the Knockhill Motorsports Club and possibly bike racing in Scotland. Jim Lang on the black ZX10 with the orange bib. But he is chasing Alan Bryce for sure. Alan Bryce is absolutely giving, a, giving Jim Lang a hard time of it this weekend. And Jim's having to really, really up the pace. Bryce, he did, though. Uh, did see a new clubman class record in the previous race, didn't he, Dennis, when it was dry? Yeah, 52-9, so impressive stuff. Seriously, quick. Some super readers, including me, would be happy with that lap time. Not Dennis Hobbs, though, but in towards the open. Jim Lang, he's ahead of Mike Keith, and Callum Milne is behind Mike Keith. So Mike Keith's been a good scar to be taken there. Yeah, Callum Milne, normally very comfortable in wet conditions on the suit bike. We've seen him right at the front, trying to challenge for race victories overall. Uh, in other, in other types of mains here at Knockhill but obviously these variable conditions making hard work but Brian Campbell inside of Don McFadgen at Clarks can he make that stick BC does it yeah no he doesn't Don McFadgen comes right back across him as head towards the open but Brian Campbell has uh, signals his intentions definitely wants to get past Don McFadgen and if there's a place well he'll be doing it and he'll be making a whole Donald you better watch yourself yeah, that's right, uh, Don McFadden is under pressure from, uh, like I say, Brian Campbell. This is a guy that said it looked smooth. It looked like he was doing a good job. It is a camera on the back of that bike, Duncan. You were right. And we see the yellow flag out on the uh, start finish so line. Who have we lost? Who's missing? Who have we lost? Who have we lost behind? Have we still got Bryce and Lang behind these guys? Let's see if we can see anything as we come past this area just now. Any marshals standing think, about with bikes? There's a bike there. Yeah, I, was think, that, I think looking on the screen, I think, that, yeah, I think that's Jim Lang that's gone. Mm. There you go. That's a commentator's and, and also, we've, we've got to say, the tall passing has also retired the pitch 
to some kind of problem, I think. So we've lost two of the quick guys. We've lost Jim Lang and Torco Parson, yet Jim Lang is dropping down the timing screen, as you say, Dennis. He has gone down at Scotsman Corner. Ryder OK. Always good to see that come up on the computer screen for us, though. As uh, still this battle on the for the hairpin with Brian Campbell trying to get past Donna McFadgen. They see them both kind of sticking to the dry line there, so what do you think? I think it's just going to be a case of being patient, trying to save your tyres. These guys are on wet tyres, Duncan. The track's drying out very, very fa fast at the moment. And they've just got to be nice and smooth, try and save the grip and the ultimate part of the tyre for the last few laps of the race. And that's when they can make it stick and count and, and try and force a pass when the tyres are still in good condition. I've got to say, I think Brian's going to have a shot in towards Clark Corner. It's where he looks good. He looks good through this part, up over the top of the John Wish chicane. And if he can get good drive, he will have a shot as Dunkey goes up then, see the George Spence. No, he doesn't. He thinks better of it. Good to see Graham Duncan back on the television. Yeah, and also. George Spence fresh yes. from the from the TT uh, uh, ditch hunting wasn't he? Uh, yeah, let's, let's let's gloss over that. George on the only Aprilia in the field here. It's great to see him. It's great to hear that bike. And George is a thoroughly nice guy, a local man from Fife on that number 46 Aprilia there. And yeah, he's got Dunkey all over the back and Big Graham Duncan. Now it's great, definitely good to see him out there. And it's good to see, like I say, a wide mix of bikes here at North Hill. Obviously, we've got the uh, the ZX10 leading the way. We've got the BMWs out there, the Hondas, and like I say, the Aprilias as well. A wide mix of uh, variety of bikes and also the G6R. So pretty much. Every Every category covered. Yeah, Duncan does get past George Spence there, and here comes Brian Campbell. He's winding the Honda up. Is he going to have a look inside Clark's? Yes, he is. He's up the inside, and this time Donald has no answer. Does Brian run in quite hot there? Yes, he does, but he's got a lot of grip, it, and he gets it. It was tight to the inside. You could see the spray off the tyres there, Duncan. So he's uh, maybe still searching for the wet part of the track as well as they come down towards the hairpin, off the dry line initially, then back onto the dry line for the route into the hairpin itself. So up into a podium position for Brian Campbell. He just takes Donald McFadden's scalp there, and Donald won't be happy with that being off the podium. Yeah, you can see him searching for the wet part of the track as well. Brian Campbell right over to the right-hand side as they come over the start-finish line. So Tasker leading the way from Houston on cue. Andrew Tasker comes through and up the back straight towards us in towards Clark Corner now. Andrew Tasker on his Kawasaki ZX-10. I suppose it's be fair to say this will be Andrew Tasker's most successful weekend aboard a big bike here in Knock Hill. Yeah, I think we'll go with that. Yeah, he's, he's definitely got it together as he goes up the inside of one of the back markers and uh, he has to go across all the way past there. Kevin Milne, I think he's just going past there. That's the ex Bruce Burnley bike that as well So he made it quite uh, difficult for Andrew or didn't he? We'll never know Checker flag time for Andrew Tasker There you go That'll do me very nicely He says he takes a great victory He'll be very happy with that The big man from Alawa just along the road Takes a little time to look over his shoulder And see where the rest of them are But it was Tasker from Roy Houston and Brian Campbell Donald McFadgen is fourth With Alan Bryce fifth First clubman fifth on the road Head of Mike Keith Callum Milne and Jason Lynn on a 600 from Ireland. Good to see Jason Lynn here and 8th position overall. Let's hand down to Joe for some interviews. Andrew Tasker, um, well done. We predicted this and it finally happened. Great race. Yeah, it was a good race. Um, shame Bruce wasn't out because I'm sure he would have been up there as well. But um, horrible, horrible conditions. I mean, we, went, we got a good start in the first half of the race. Everyone was going fine. The track was wet, gave it five minutes when the red flag and there was a dry line and it was horrible, you could feel the front tucking and I just wanted to bring it home in one piece because I'm pretty sure my dad wouldn't have appreciated a bike in bits but um, yeah it's been a, a really good weekend, good results, shame Bruce wasn't out but again it's points back on him but um, yeah. You're closing that gap. Yeah, yeah we're, we're getting there, we're getting there but um, yeah. Just mega thanks. Well I'm done, ready. really really great weekend and great to see you winning because I think it's just going to keep going now. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully this is the first of many, well, second of many, but um, yeah. Roy, second place. When I spoke to you at the start, you said to me, I'm going to get behind Andrew, I'm going to stick with him, and you kind of did, but you couldn't quite stay with him for the full race. Yeah, I was, uh, I had a look at the tyres, and his is actually a lot better than mine is. I don't know, it might be suspension set up or something, but uh, hats off to him, he, he rode a brilliant race, and I did try to stick on the back on, but just not quite there. But I'm super happy with the, the result. So. Andrew said conditions were horrible because it was actually starting to dry out at the end. It was drying a lot of places. The exit of the hairpin into the first corner, and it, with the wets, it goes like like marbles, and it? it moves like that across. So it's it's not ideal, but everybody's in the same boat, so you can't really complain, eh? So no, I'm mega pleased with that. And uh, all thanks goes to Kirkcaldy Kawasaki and all my other sponsors as well. So Good stuff. Hope this is the return. Cheers, Joe. That's brilliant. Well done. Third place and a big smile on your face. A great, uh, great result. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Uh, like I so yesterday, we had quite good pace in the wet, but for whatever reason, we're just still lacking a wee, a wee bit in the dry. But uh, now nah, I'm glad to have kind of got away and got a good race with Donald and made the lunge and got by him. So now nah, I'm happy, happy with the podium. The conditions at the end, everybody's saying, was really horrible because it started to dry up. It started to get that dry line. 
time, but that's when you made the position. Yeah, yeah, I noticed that, especially on the warm-up lap, the track was drying really quick and I was close to pulling in, to be honest, because the tyres were that soft, I thought they'll just fall to bits and it's just a, a waste of a set of tyres, but I, th I thought once once it got into race head, I thought I would stick, stick with it and uh, keep chipping away, and the f it was horrible, the front end touching the front bait, the front end was really vague, but nah, I just kept on, kept on the back stuff and made the... You'd be kicking yourself if you'd have pulled in with this result. Oh, I definitely, I know, it's a good, good end to a difficult weekend. Well done, great result. Thanks very much, cheers. So three very happy young guys on the podium there. Bruce Burney still leads from Andrew Tasker and Dora McFadgen. Torco Parsons got himself up into fourth and Brian Campbell's fifth. Roy Houston with a fantastic second place. A great weekend for Roy sees him in sixth. With Mike Keith seventh and Scott Shand still in eighth. Not here this weekend. Jim Lang, Alan Bryce and Derek Butcher are the top three in the clubmans. With Richard Hughes and Callum Milne chasing hard. Big Dunkey in sixth place with Andy Hunter and Alan Howitson on his Ducati in eighth place. That's all we've got time for from the superbikes and the sidecars, but do join us next time for some more close racing.